ghosts? According to a recent survey, one in four of us does. And I wonder if the other three would be enthusiastic about spending a night alone in a haunted house. Well, with me are Ruth West from the Kersler Foundation, which researches the paranormal, and psychic investigator Tom Robertson. Tom has just published these photographs of a ghost which he says has haunted him for years. Well, well Tom, the ghost that we are seeing here, if we're seeing a ghost here, is, as I understand it, the black lady of Lark Hall in Lanarkshire. Who is she supposed to be? She's supposed to be <coughs> wife or concubine of the, the Laird Captain McNeil, who brought her there to Lark Hall in 1980, eight, 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 1890, sorry. But uh, she was never ever seen to leave the house again. And the locals maintain that she'd been murdered, a, a, a disappearance. They were seen from it taking pails of blood from her room and parcels the last day she was seen alive in the house, which gives to the story that she was murdered. Could you tell me about the photographs and how you came to take them? It was quite recently, wasn't it? Two weeks ago, the photographs, I was down at the house and uh, I was joined by two gentlemen who had been fishing in the water. We were sitting there for about 10 minutes when the thing just appeared. And they got rather upset, but I knew, I knew straight away what it was. So I followed it and they followed me. And as we went round the corner, it was standing, making no attempt to go away, just standing as if it wanted us to be there. So that's when the photographs was taken. And what was the atmosphere? How did you feel? Was it, were you scared? Well, the gentleman that was with me, was, uh, they, were rather, they were upset, to say the least, but uh, I've got used to it. It's more apprehension with me because uh, they can be vicious, they can be sore on you. Well, I understand that the deputy picture editor of the Sunday Mail, which, which published those pictures, has said that he can see no way that those were tampered with. Can you tell me what, what camera, this is the camera you took them with, yes? This is the camera here. <coughs> Now, for the thousands of pounds of equipment that's been used over the years, I myself know absolutely nothing about cameras. I've always depended on someone else to take the photos, but nothing has ever come out. This was got with cigarette coupons, and it took, the, took the, the pictures. It has to be said that the deputy picture editor of the paper that published them would say that, wouldn't he? Because he obviously would want people to believe it, and you want people to believe it. But can you reassure the sceptics who are listening to you now that those pictures were what you saw? Well, these pictures were what, because this only... This can't be tampered with. This takes moving pictures, four pictures, and what it sees, it takes. Mm -hmm. Now, there's no way that, that could be tampered with. There were two people out from the Scottish Psychic Research Institution, and they had no doubt whatsoever that we had a visitor mm. from beyond the grave. Ruth West, your reaction to this story and the implication of this story is that this is a photograph of a ghost. Is this something you can accept? Um, yes, quite easily I can accept it, but uh, it, the problem comes to when you want to come provide the evidence for it, and if you want to provide scientific evidence for it, it gets very difficult because scientists will only really be satisfied when you've disproved it, because it doesn't fit in within their scientific framework. Ghosts cannot exist. It's really the end of the story. But is it the, the fundamental premise of the, F the Kirsten Foundation that ghosts do or can exist? Uh, can, yes. Well, obviously, we, I mean, we start off by saying that there are more things in this universe than we know of and can measure. And we set up the foundation because we thought the time was coming when a change in science was happening so that actually would, we would be able to understand these things scientifically. How do you try to go about it then? What is the approach that you apply to this particular aspect, to psychic research? Yeah, it's, it's still very difficult actually at the moment. I mean, I th say when we set up the foundation ten years ago, this was Kersler's belief. He, f he felt that things were changing in science and we would be having new methodologies and a new scientific framework which would include the spiritual and the psychic. Um, we haven't got there yet, and the foundation finds that its best work is done by actually looking at spontaneous cases, what what's, we're doing. Mm. What's your own instinct about it? What's your own feeling? Do you feel that um, there is a lot I'm, there? Yes, yes, and I'm not at all bothered at, at accepting that these other beings exist, but I've got a lot of scientific colleagues who are absolutely terrified at the notion that the Earth is not as they've learnt it is, and that how they've been taught about from the scientific point of view in schools is wrong. And it is quite frightening, actually, because it gets out of your control, then. What do, what do you really think about Tom's pictures? And you've, uh, you've seen them a couple of times now. Yeah, um, fascinating. <laughs> um, and 
but I, I couldn't say more than that. I, mean, I know there's somebody who will only be satisfied when he's actually said, well, no, I'm sorry, Tom, you're a fraud. Um, you somehow tampered with that film. Um, <laughs> but it, it's very, very difficult. There's, well, there was one other person, Ted Sirius, in the States in the 60s, who seemed to be able to take psychic photographs in this way. Um, but we don't really know the end of the story because the end of the story was that the photographs mm. were shown to be frauds by Tom, some people. Tom, you have to put up with this a lot of the time because you've been doing this for years. Why do you do it? Why the compulsion? Well, I don't know. It's just something I was born with. I can go back to I was eight years of age. And it was even then, I couldn't stop myself. But other boys, well, I was normal, a norm, normal boy, but these were things that kept coming to me. And when I'm about, things happen. Things appear, and not just with myself. Most times, I prefer a witness. Or people begin to say, "Well, he's, he's getting worse and worse. He's, he's beginning to see things now." But that's not the case. This is genuine. This photo is, is definitely genuine. This is a sense that you have that you can't can't explain and, and can't pass on to anybody else. Well, no, it's it's not like reading a book. I mean, you're only man taught when you read books. This is something you've got to be born with, and it's not something that I can give to someone else. Someone else has to be born to take over from me. Ruth, going back to the scientific approach to this again, I mean, can you, you say that at once it was perhaps thought that a scientific approach could determine the existence of ghosts and that that is not seen as to be, to be the case now. Do you think that could re-emerge as a possibility? Do you think the time could come when science can establish, yes, mm. ghosts can exist and do exist in a certain set of circumstances? I hope so. I mean, the closest we got to it, actually, was very interesting. In, in the 70s, somebody invented what something was called a mini lab. And it, this was a, it was a fish tank, and it was padlocked. And inside, he put all sorts of things that a ghost might be able to move around and set it up then in a room that was haunted, where a ghost was known to be. And, you know, in the morning, they got up, and the things had been moved around. Some two rings had been joined together. Uh, that's the closest I know that we've got to actually be able to, quote, measure a ghost at work. <laughs> but of course, for the moment, we are nonetheless left with uh, Tom's photographs, which prove something to Tom, undoubtedly, which will fascinate a lot of people who've been watching, and which remain for a lot of us a mystery. But thanks very much for talking to us today. Pleasure.